All right. Well, here is some news that may be big surprise to you, but not that big a surprise to me. But we can say it now. Deontay Wilder has parted ways with his longtime trainer, Mark Breland. Breland will not be part of the team preparing Deontay Wilder to fight Tyson Fury. This is a lot to this because I heard that I had heard this where I'd also heard several other things. So if this is true, they might be as well. Let's get into that in this video. All right, welcome back, welcome back. So Deontay Wilder, the Bronze Bomber, um, the uh, absolute monster out there in the boxing ring who recently lost his WBC belt to Tyson Fury uh, after a fight where, you know, I think it's safe to say pretty much just everything went wrong. Tyson Fury fans want to say that Deontay Wilder's just a bum and, you know, all of that. Um, many people say that, nah, there was some real funny stuff going on with Tyson Fury in that fight. And in fact, Deontay Wilder had said, or at least this is attributed to Deontay Wilder's and is coming through people that are very well known to be associates, his associates and be considered part of his inner circle. You know, a lot of them were saying there was some funny business, a lot of funny business going on. Now, when we talked about that um, with my man Tay, we'll, you know, we'll get him back on the channel eventually one of these days if he feels like coming back on, if he has to come back on. If it would be time to, you know, share some other uh, very interesting news. However, the firing of Mark Breland, look, man, this had this this was coming. Now, despite the fact, and I think it was coming for several reasons, okay? Several reasons. One has is related to what happened with Tyson Fury. And I think what is also a reason why it's happening is what has been happening for quite a while and we'll cover both of those things but the first thing um we'll talk about is but let me let me because let me tell you who Deontay Wilder really is and not who these Tyson Fury fans or these other people want to tell you who he is uh tell you that he is this guy is an extremely six extremely successful boxer with 10 successful title defenses of the WBC uh heavyweight title the man has knocked out, uh, had 40 wins, has knocked out 40 people for a 95.2 knockout percentage. Uh, man, the dude is looking excellent. And, I mean, the dude is excellent, excellent fighter. Um, but there are things missing in this game. If you recall, and this is important to say on the lead into the discussion, that Floyd Mayweather Jr. was asking to train him, right? And saying, look, man, there's some things that you can do that will make life a lot easier and make it easier to beat Tyson Fury. Um, so, you know, those don't think that those type of considerations couldn't come into play for Deontay Wilder um, as well. But obviously the reason, one the main reason that people are going to focus on and talk about is that, is how the Tyson Fury fight ended. And a lot of the things that were said, you know, the things that happened in the, in the, the last round, I think it was the seventh round, happened in the seventh round, and things that happened right after the fight took place. Now, that is obviously when the towel was thrown in by Mark Breland, uh, when it looked like to many people, many it, to be very, very fair to Mark Breland, it looked like to almost anybody walking on TV, watching on TV, that this the fight wasn't going to go any other way than, than Tyson Fury winning the fight. And it was just going to carry on and be more just ridiculousness that was going on you know, now I can't, I, at the time, looking at it just cleanly, I was like, oh man, Tyson Fury's beating him. He's beating him convincingly. You know, this fight ain't going to change. This, he hurt him several rounds ago and it's just continuing to be this, you know, what it was. Um, So, Mark Brilliant threw in the towel. I didn't really have a big issue with it. You know, didn't like that Deontay Wilder lost the fight, but didn't have really any big issue with the fact that Mark Brilliant threw in the towel. And I don't think that there's going to be a lot of, there were a lot of people at the time who really did. And in fact, people were saying, hey, look, don't take it out on Mark Breland. Because, you know, right after the fight, Mark Breland 
the word is, didn't get didn't go into the locker room with Deontay Wilder and the team. In the ring, you could see that Deontay Wilder was looking at him like, man, why'd you throw in the towel? Why'd you throw in the towel? And then he didn't initially let Mark Breland into you know, the locker room after the fight. The reason why that was is because Mark Breland threw in the towel and Deontay Wilder said, man, I don't care how hurt I am. Let me continue to fight. Do not throw in the towel. I don't, if it ever looks like I'm in trouble, don't do it. I want to go out on my shield, right? Now, for a guy like Deontay Wilder who knocks people out so viciously that the, that the opponents don't even have the ability to throw in the towel, the, the corner doesn't have the ability to throw in the towel, you know, it, it seems like that is at least fair from a guy that is running, that is beating up people like that, that he says, hey, look, man, don't try to save me. I'm out here. And he and he believes that he always has a chance because all he's got to do is connect. And he prove, has proven that he carries this power all the way to the 12th round. So even though we might not have been able to see that, um, Deontay Wilder the, himself felt that way. Now, saying that it was fair and that it was right, excuse me, for uh, Mark Breland to do that doesn't take away the fact that that was the instruction for the fighter. So Mark Breland made a choice. Look, I'm gonna do. Am I gonna do something that this that the champ told me not to do because I think it's in the champ's best interest, right? He says yes. That's my job. It's got to go. We got to end it, right? However, he then has to live with the ramifications of that. Okay, just because you made the right decision from the percentage, you know, from the from the position of a of a trainer doesn't mean that the that you don't have to suffer the ramifications for that, right? Just what it, it's just what it is. So it, the simple fact that he didn't follow instructions could very well be a reason to let Mark Breland go. Also, the lack of trust in the and wondering whether if it happens again in the next fight, if he's going to do it again, that pretty much locks away the fact that Mark Breland cannot be in that corner for the next time for the next fight, especially for you know for a guy like the uh, a guy like Deontay Wilder. So you know on that side. I understand it from, like I said, I understand it from the uh, point of view of uh, both Mark Breland and Deontay Wilder. Uh, now, here's another reason why uh, they he could have been fired as well. Like I said, Floyd Mayweather Jr. was saying, hey, that he would be very interested in training Deontay Wilder. You also heard the same the same thing be said uh, by guys like George Foreman said the same thing. And in fact, I do believe that um, that George Foreman wound up uh, actually speaking on the phone to, De to Deontay Wilder and telling him, hey, man, you could work this way or that way. Now, if you now he's not going to work with George Foreman. But if you think for a second that George Foreman is a heavyweight and he understands what it is to fight as a heavyweight and Mark Breland is not a heavyweight. Right. So and plus, you know, all of the accolades that I mentioned that Deontay Wilder having won with Mark Breland, he did win with Mark Breland. Right. And Mark Breland was there and got paychecks for all for uh, for all of the fights that he was there. But if you are unable to you fight somebody twice and you're not be able to you know, to actually beat them two times, you might have to make some changes in your corner. Just like after Tyson Fury didn't beat Deontay Wilder, he made changes in his corner. So to me, it sounds like, um, you know, like that is not an un, that's not an unreasonable thing. So then that progresses to, leads us to the question, well, you know, who would it be that could train Deontay Wilder? Now I have heard, and this was several months ago, that there was a person that was in mind, uh, that, that they had in mind. I'm not going to say who that is, but I know that there was somebody that they, that people had in mind because this thing with Mark Breland, like I said, you know, the fact that 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 Shelly Finkel and these guys are announcing that Mark Breland won't be back tells me that these guys are starting to enter into um are starting to enter maybe getting closer to getting into training camp, right? Because they're saying, all right, well, you know, official announcement now, what we've known for like almost a year has actually happened. So when Deontay Wilder starts, you know, you start seeing press conferences and things like that, uh, that, you know, could lead you to believe that um you know, you know, that's why they would let you know at this point in time, because it's imminent. It's imminent, right? It's imminent that whoever is going to be the trainer would have come out and let it be known uh, regardless. But all in all, man, I think that that is a good decision. 
I think it was a good, hey man, it was a good run for Mark Breland. I don't miss, I don't wish any bad uh, ill will uh, on uh, Mark Breland. And I understand why he did what he did. Now there's also things related around, you know, snakes in the camp and all that. And, you know, whether or not now you may hear, you know, from this angle or that angle that, you know, Mark Breland might've been, you know, part of, or, you know, suspected of being part of that. You know, I'm not going to comment on that other than to acknowledge that uh, the people that will listen to this video very, you know, have heard that other places. Um, and that is what it is. You know, there are, if people are out there suspicious about what's going on and they, they're going to be suspicious of everybody that could have had anything to do with it. So, you know, if, if they thought, thought that part of the shadiness was that Mark Breland at that Mark Breland failed to, uh, heed what that heed that instruction and took it upon himself to end the fight and they feel like that is related to some other kind of shadiness because he was specifically told not to do that and to let me go out on my shield hey man you know it is what it is that could have been a reason but anyway that's my take on the matter you let me know what you think and with that i'm out peace